Welcome to Behavior Grooves. My name is Kurt Nelson. And I'm Tim Houlihan. Given the strange and turbulent times that we are living through, Kurt and I decided to reach out to some of our favorite behavioral science researchers and practitioners to get their take on the novel coronavirus pandemic that is shaking the world. These special edition episodes will explore a variety of different aspects of the crisis and our response to each of those aspects through a behavioral lens. We know that you may feel overwhelmed by the crisis already. It seems Every news story, every social media thread, every phone conversation that we have is focused on some aspect of the pandemic right now. While the news and updated information are essential, we're going to take a different tact. We want to try to understand the science behind our reactions and our behaviors and how science can help us cope and move beyond the current crisis. In each episode, we talk with a different behavioral science expert and get their best thinking on an aspect of the crisis. So sit back, take a deep breath, and listen to our special series on behavioral science and the coronavirus pandemic. We know that the COVID-19 crisis has impacted the way many of us work. One job that we have not heard a lot about is the business-to-business sales rep. We wanted to find out how salespeople are being impacted, and our guest today is Michael Bowden. Michael, can you tell us a little bit about your company and your title? Yeah, so um, I work for Syngenta Crop Protection, which is a uh, global company that is a R&D research and development-based company uh, based out of Basel, Switzerland. And we basically um, invent and manufacture and sell agricultural inputs uh, into uh, the ag sector. Um, I personally am uh, head of U.S. Crop Protection Sales uh, based in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's terrific. So so you have people in the field who are selling to who? So we have um, a distribution model. So uh, as we manufacture uh, chemicals, um, we sell them to a distributor who uh, then in, in, in a couple different ways, either sells them to directly to the grower through a integrated retail model, or uh, we, they sell it as what we call a three-step where a uh, uh, distributor sells it to a uh, retail location who then sells it to the, uh, the grower or the farmer uh, out in the country. And most of this is done face to face up to recent it history. It is a right? very uh, relationship oriented industry. It is very uh, hands on. It is very um, um, personal, belly to belly type uh, selling. Yeah. So it is very much uh, a, a different world that we're operating in today. Let's just say that. I have to admit, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to add belly to belly sales to my lexicon because that's a new one on me. Well, now it's done six feet apart, though. Uh, so it, uh, yeah. So Not so beyond big. beyond the sales reps that you have, you also have um, other people that work for you. Can you tell a little bit about them? So we've got a lot of specialized uh, type folks. So um, in, in our industry, uh, you know, it, it's not just about selling. It's about the agronomic uh, uh, recommendations that our people make. Uh, you know, when a grower has a, a issue or concern uh, in one of their fields, they don't always understand what and why. And so we've got uh, agronomists who are able to go out and uh, work with them in order to um, understand what the needs are. We also have um, a seed care platform where we're actually putting uh, different things on the seed in order to allow the seed to uh, get the best chance of surviving through uh, cold, wet, uh, different pathogens that may come into play. And uh, so the seed care specialists are out there working with retailers in order to make sure they're getting the right amounts of of the chemical on the seed. And uh, and then we have AgRedge, which is a, um, a technology that we utilize uh, that is a, um, a software type program that the grower can utilize in order to understand what his return on investment is on the field. So, so a lot of specialized type uh, roles, not just going out and selling, but a lot of specialized type roles that are involved uh, to where, again, the, those folks historically would have been out interacting face-to-face uh, with uh, their respective uh, customers or, or, or person that they're working with. Yeah. So the, would they be working with the the, the the grower at the very end of, of that, that chain there? 
So they work with uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, so as I said earlier, we go through a retail um, interface. And so in many cases, they're working with uh, retail sales reps who uh, ultimately work with the grower. And then they're also working alongside that retail uh, person to go to the grower in many cases um, when specialized issues uh, arise. Let's go back to the agronomists mm-hmm. uh, in the in the field because you, you actually mentioned they're out there in the field because they're actually using their skills by looking at the ground and looking at the crops and actually physically being there to analyze what's going on with their sight and, and smell and and all those kinds of that's, things, right? That's right. Yeah. So how are they doing their job yeah, today? Yeah, so um, we've had to get pretty creative. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can imagine, um, during the winter months, we do a lot of training, right? And so we're, we're trying to educate and train. And uh, things like Zoom, uh, things like video conferencing uh, have become the mainstay, especially when you're trying to get larger groups of, of folks together. We use, you know, the digital technology, FaceTime, uh, th- things like that in order to uh, have more one-on-one conversations but then there's 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 as you as you said tim there's there's times where you've got to be out there and you've got to be looking at it and so uh what we've tried to make sure that we um are are focused on is the safety of both our people as well as the the farmer or the the retailer that they're interacting with and and you know what we've told our folks is um you know social distancing is an absolute must Uh, you you can still go out into a field and, and have that interaction i actually uh had a, a picture come through here uh, not long ago where uh, it had uh, a, a tape measure across the hood of a truck, which was just a little bit more than six feet. And so uh, you had, uh, uh, you know, the grower on one side of the truck and the uh, the agronomist on the other side of the truck, and they were having a conversation and they were doing their social distancing. But, uh, you know, you can't replace what you see and feel and, 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 and understand what's going on out in that field, uh, but you can do it very um uh, intently and you can do it uh, in a social distancing type deal. And so uh, maybe the two different people are going out in the field and looking at the same thing at different times uh, and then comparing notes uh, at the end. And, and that's different because normally you like to be out there with them. So what has been the hardest part of this crisis for your sales force from a work perspective in your mind? What, what do they get most angst or stressed about? not being able to sit there with their customers and uh and have that one-on-one conversation in close proximity i mean it as i said earlier our industry is very much a relationship industry it uh it's 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 really about um when you make a decision on a crop whether it be on the seed that you're going to plant with the inputs you're going to put in you only get one chance right there's only one growing season that's out there right and then if you don't make those good decisions uh, you can find yourself in a very difficult spot, right? And so, just the 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 interaction, the engagement, the face to face, you know, reading uh, how people react to the conversation, uh, you know, those are all things that uh, are are challenging in these times. And so that's where, again, um, you know, most people didn't like the uh, camera on their computer or on their phone because they, they, they thought that somebody might be spying on them. Now they're, <laughs> they're glad it's there because they can actually see who they're talking to and they can they can read those <laughs> facial expressions and they can, uh, you know, look at things that are uh, happening uh, without actually getting in the truck and driving six hours to get there. Um, you know, we operate in in territories that oftentimes are very large, especially when you get into places like Texas. And uh, so instead of, you know, having to, to go through the scenario where you've got to get in the truck, drive six hours, spend the night in a hotel, uh, get up the next morning, go out and, and visit, uh, you know, the customer or the, the situation uh, that's occurring in the field. People are taking, you know, video chats and, 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 and doing things uh, electronically. And, um, and that's very different. That's uh, something that our salespeople don't normally do they're getting better at but uh it it creates a lot of anxiety when you can't sit down with your customers it might be easy to say well if if that uh, person isn't having to get in the truck and drive six hours and spend a night in a hotel that they should be a lot more productive but we've had a lot of conversations with people about distractions and and the challenges the anxieties that go along with all these very new routines how are you as a sales leader looking at productivity these days? Yeah, so um, I think the, the biggest thing that I've done differently is, is really, 
up to the engagement uh, that I try to have with with the people that I work with, right? And so uh, I've gotten into a, a cadence where uh, I'm going to talk to, whereas I'm historically maybe talk to folks once a week, right? I'm going to talk to them at least every other day, uh, or, mm-hmm. or in some cases every day, because you know these are they're very difficult times for them and for myself. I mean, uh, you know, working from home is not what I normally do. Uh, you know, working in a uh, an environment that uh, you know I've got a, a wife and. And she's uh, actively doing things around the house. And, uh, you know, it used to be when somebody made a noise in the background, I thought the whole world was coming to an end. Now, uh, you know, I've been on calls where dogs are barking, kids are coming into the room. Uh, you know, you, 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 you just change your uh, perspective on things, right? And uh, mm-hmm. know that, uh, you know, you, you better be flexible. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated very easily. So, so, you know, I think the biggest thing that I've done is, is try to up the cadence in terms of, when and how we interact, even if it's just a quick two or three minute phone call, uh, checking in on people, checking in to make sure and asking how the team's doing, asking how the family's doing, asking how the pets are doing, uh, you know, just that up in the game in terms of um, interaction. These people that you're interacting with, you didn't see them in the office before. This is typically just uh, uh, they're out in the field already, but the, yeah. the, because of this crisis and because of all the stress that they're going through, these changes that you're doing are, are really to look at their emotional health and, and to make sure that they're doing well. So it's a, it's a different world that you're act, er, activated in. Exactly right. Now, you know, 95% of the people that uh, I work with are, are remote. Now, we do have office facilities where I have uh, other functions that I, that I deal with, but th- within my sales organization, they're all remote. And so Again, it's, it, you know, I've talked to people I haven't talked to for quite a while, and it's actually been kind of fun in that respect because, uh, you know, you get to build some, um, you know, different types of relationships than what you maybe had in the past. I've heard stories about people getting to know, you mentioned dogs, and I've heard stories about people getting to know uh, their coworkers' dogs better than they've ever imagined <laughs> these days. Well, I've got some cases where I didn't know people had pets, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> you look in their uh, in, in their world, because that's one thing that, you know, we utilize Zoom quite a bit. And uh, when, when you're on a Zoom mm-hmm. call, you get to see the, the world that people uh, live in as opposed to the people or the world that people work in, right? And so uh, all of a sudden, you're seeing pictures of a family and pictures of things. And, you, you know, we're learning more about each other than what we probably ever have. What tips would you pass on to other leaders who are in similar situations in businesses that have typically relied on face-to-face relationship building, building belly-to-belly yep. sales, yep. as you say? You know, the, the tips that I, I think I would go back on is, number one, keep your people safe, right? Uh, don't think that uh, you need to send them out and, and have them be the heroes in this because uh, the heroes are really those that will uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and continue to do what they need to do. Um Tell them not to be afraid uh, that uh, different ways of working and different ways of engaging are, are absolutely critical. Um, you know, it, 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 it will change, I believe, how we operate going forward. But in the, in the short term, um, you know, utilize technology, utilize Zoom calls, utilize uh, um, FaceTime, utilize all those different things that are out there. Um, and then and then lastly, it, it's really about um you know, this will pass with time, right? Uh, I think people are getting a bit uh, anxious in that, uh, you know, there's not a deadline, uh, so to speak, as to when things will open back up. And so um, be patient, uh, you know, uh, understand that people are going through a lot of uh, challenges and, uh, you know, the uncertainty that uh, people deal with that uncertainty very differently. And so they really need to, to take their time and, and just go with the flow and um, and work through things. And then the last thing I'd say is, you know, I've probably got more exercise here in the last uh, month because, yeah, the wife and I are walkers, but not always together and not always at the same time. That's how we get our stress relief out, right? Uh, yeah. You know, come lunch break, uh, you know, we grab a quick bite to eat and then we try to get in our 10,000 steps. And, uh, you know, that breaking up the day, uh, you know, you don't have to sit behind the desk all day long. Get out, get some exercise. Uh, you can do it. uh you know, very easy, uh, provide the weather is conducive to that, but, uh, you know, find something as a, as an alternative to, uh, to do it, uh, and, and, and get your exercise because that sure does help relieve a lot of stress. Yeah. So you talked about, you know, don't be afraid and, and change and making sure those things are going on. How have change is hard for people, mm-hmm. right? We, we are often stuck in our, our routines and our habits. And, and so this, 
obviously has forced a lot of people to change. How are you helping your salespeople adapt to that change? And what what suggestions do you have for other leaders out there to help their people through that change? Yeah, so helping them adapt to change is really just listening to what their their challenges are and, and trying to come up with creative ways in order to address that, right? And so we do a lot of um, tours during the uh, the growing season to take growers out and, and, and retailers out to show them, you know, what our new technologies look like, what our old technologies look like, and, you know, how that, that kind of happens, right? Um, fortunately, a lot of, often cases, we videotaped a lot of those type of things for training purposes. Now we're using those uh, videotapes for uh, selling, right? And so, um, you know, and, and, and we call them a virtual tour, right? To where you don't have to actually be on site or you don't have to be there in person. Uh, you can sit at your computer and you can do it virtually, which is, is a very different way of, of doing business. Uh, sales meeting. As I mentioned earlier, we utilize Zoom, uh, not trying to put an advertising in for Zoom, but it's great technology. But, um, you know, one thing that we've learned is is getting people to turn the camera on so that you can see them is a huge uh, benefit, right? Um, don't just uh, rely on, you know, the voice coming through. Uh, turn the camera on and it really makes you feel like you have a sense of community. Um, I've even heard in, in, you know, so far I haven't been, uh, involved in one, but you know, there are coffee hours that are or coffee breaks that are taking place, uh, virtually, right. Uh, there are, um, uh, end of day, uh, you know, grab a beer or a glass of wine or your favorite beverage and, uh, you know, sit down and just talk to people. Uh, right. And so, um, you know, a virtual happy hour, uh, you know, those are things that, people are doing in order to get out of their, their, um, their shell, so to speak, uh, or their environment that they're in and, and, and engage more broadly. Yeah. You had talked about, this is a, a, a relationship heavy kind of sales piece. What, what have you found about this with people that your salespeople already have a relationship with versus, you know, maybe trying to get new customers? Is there a difference in how that has uh, this takes place and how the new technology works within that situation. Yeah. Where you've got a relationship, I got to tell you, it's just a lot easier. Right. And so the value of that relationship, and that's why, you know, when things get back to whatever that new normal looks like, you know, people will still need to get out. Uh, we're not going to go to a virtual world where we don't engage or get belly to belly with our customers. Right. <laughs> we, I mean, it just doesn't work uh, for the, you know, the long term. where we have relationships, where we have uh, consistency in our approach, where you have um, that, that, that history with somebody, uh, you know, it, it, it does make things easier. Um, and I think that's, you know, something that uh, we value even more today um, because, um, you know, when you have to resolve an issue, um, it's a whole lot easier if you already had that relationship in place than trying to cold call and get somebody to um, get confidence in what you're bringing to them uh, if you don't have the relationship. So, so I, you know, going in, in, in the future, you know, I think, uh, you know, the need to go out and, and build those relationships it will always be there uh, doing it. Uh, Hopefully, closer than six feet apart, we'll we'll uh, <laughs> we'll we'll come back and we'll be there. But I also think that we'll learn how every time somebody does have an issue, um, you don't need to jump in the in the truck and, and run across the country in order to get to them or get on an airplane in order to get to them. We'll find that uh, people can utilize technology more than what we probably had embraced up to this point. On this idea of um, things that will change and things that won't, what else do you think is going to continue? What what could you imagine coming out of this um, crisis within your organization that is likely to continue to be a part of your organization? Well, I think you know a lot of the things that um, that we've been we had to do in terms of processes and, and ways of working, and um, uh, you know we have production facilities and we have, um, you know, that are very dependent on people and their capabilities. And so, you know, you almost need to build a bit more redundancy into um, how you come at things, right? Uh, and then and, and think through what are all the different scenarios that could 
potentially create a barrier to you operating in this um, in in this current world as as well as as the world will go into in the future. And so, I think what it you know what I take away from from all this is is you know it's really challenged us to think differently. It's challenged us to be more proactive in terms of how we plan for um, these types of situations, and it and it's really pushed us to. Uh, uh, utilize and embrace technology in a different way than we ever have. And, uh, you know, once you start to do that, once you start to get confident in that, uh, it doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, relationships are critical, as we talked about earlier, but it really does give you the opportunity to uh, utilize a lot more of the resources that have been out there differently than what you probably have. Yeah. Michael, thank you. The insights that you brought here, I think, are really important for people to understand. And and just thank you for you know taking time. I know it's a crazy time of, of the year for you, as as well as this this whole situation. So we, we appreciate it. Well, thank you, and uh, appreciate everything you all do. I love it. All right. Welcome to the special edition grooving session, where Tim and I groove on some ideas and concepts that were inspired by our really interesting conversation with Michael. All right, Tim, sales in this time of social and physical distancing, what is it that really spurred some thoughts or concepts that you want to discuss uh, based on our conversation with Michael? Well, the first thought I had was how great he he shared how it's not just the relationship. It's not the physical, physical thing between a sales rep and a grower or a farmer. It's actually the the sales rep and the agronomist and the retailer and the distributor and the grower, like this this complex network of people who are used to getting together physically. And so so his business isn't just like, oh, let's just have a sales rep go out in the field and sell some stuff. This is actually a complex network that he's got some big challenges ahead and yet he's doing it. It seems like they're actually getting it done. They're figuring out how to manage it. Yeah, I, I loved his term belly to belly relationship. Oh, yeah. Right? This, yeah, yeah. I, I just picture yeah. farmers and I picture, you know, these guys out there belly to belly. And and yeah. that's gone away at this point. Uh, and his idea of, you know, the guy who took the measuring tape across the, right. the hood or the bed of the, the, the truck, right? And it's six feet apart. So that's part of what they're we, doing. We can have our meeting across the We can have across our meeting the across the, yeah. the, the back or the front of a, of a pickup truck, which, yeah. you know, again, makes sense for, for this thing. I, I think the interesting piece on that though is this idea that sales in just general and and the people who are doing business to business sales that person to person sales are going through a really difficult time mm-hmm. because this is so unlike how they have had to do business in the past and understanding how they can build those belly to belly relationships in a way where you can't become belly to belly is a problem that a lot of salespeople are going through right now. Yeah. And yeah. what I loved about Michael is they're saying, you know what, we're figuring this out. Yeah. This is we're, we're being creative. We're, we're getting in on concepts and thoughts and ideas that two months ago would have seemed weird, but now this is just how we're doing it and it's working. Well, there is a particular challenge being Uh, in the business that he's in selling products to farmers is that he said, you can't replace what you see and feel when you're out in the field. Like, you know, if you're, if you're an agronomist, you actually have to have your hands in the dirt to actually understand what's going on from a chemical perspective, from a moisture perspective, you need to actually see and touch the, the physical plants as they're growing up to understand what kinds of issues they've got. And he did a great job of saying, we're figuring that out. Maybe we we're, we're in the same field, but at different times. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe it's you go out and then I go out 20 minutes later uh, or, or we'll video some of it. We'll use FaceTime. We'll use, he was really big on using the technology. And I thought that that were, that was really cool. Yeah. And um, I think that the technology piece is a big aspect of that, mm-hmm. but there is something to be said about being on site whether it's in in a farmer's field or whether that's in a plant or inside a company and what they're doing to understand the nuances that are going on there. I know in the work that you and I do, 
you know, part of what we sell is this almost anthropological going in and yeah. understanding of of how people are interacting together and the idea of looking and understanding the behavioral aspects of that community of people and how they work together. And if you're not in, and if companies aren't together in doing that, you know, how do you, how do you get that feel that sense? And so yeah. changing that up. Isn't this part of the scientific method is observation. Yeah. And now we could say we could observe data, but part of what you and I do is we're observing people. We're, we're observing people. Oftentimes yeah. we're sitting down across the ta table from them, having a conversation, recording an interview and watching their reactions. And observing people when they're doing their work, going yes. out and actually seeing the interactions to understand those dynamics that aren't happening. Now, given the fact that we're doing a lot more online, you know, we'll have to change. We have to modify how that that uh, observation works. Maybe it's us yeah. being part of a Zoom call. Maybe it's us being different things. I think, and, and across the board, and I'm not just focusing on us, across the board for salespeople, across the board for people, consultants who are like us, who, who do this type of work, we have to adapt. We have to adapt yeah. to this changing environment that we're in, because as it as it seems now, this isn't going to be a two month and done type thing. This is going to be a longer road that we have to travel down and we need to make those ad adaptations and, and be able to, to make those changes because otherwise we're going to be, we're done. You know, yeah, we're done. We're floating, <laughs> we're, we're floating down a river without a, without a canoe. So yeah. what, what, what struck you, Kurt? What was, uh, what else caught your attention? Well, you brought this up actually in a conversation that we had about this proximity and its relationship to trust and intimacy, right? Oh, There's yeah, a, yeah. There is real research out there that talks about the idea that the closer we are physically together, and there's there's even research about touch and, and how touch releases endorphins and various different pieces, and we're missing that in these relationships. So Robin Dunbar has done a lot of work on studying relationships and and really bringing in this idea that you look at mammals, just the grooming things that, that chimpanzees or other oh, mammals exactly. do, and it releases exactly. endorphins. And we do it mm -hmm. because it feels good, and that builds trust, and it builds this bond. And it, you can't replicate that very easily over video chat, over face FaceTime or Zoom or whatever other thing you're doing. And so how do we get beyond that? How is it that we can move to that level of trust? And what I loved about what he was saying too, and I don't know if this was either before we start recording or after we start recording, but this idea that it's easier to do business with people you already have relationships in this time. Yes. Right? Because you have yes. that sense of trust. You have that relationship that is already built and you have maybe shaken the hands with that person. You've definitely probably been across the table from them in close proximity, standing in the field you know, next to, next to them. And so now having this I idea of trying to build new relationships where you don't have that relationship and that trust already built, it's a more of a challenge. Yeah, you, there is a huge body of research on this proximity and trust. So 30 years uh, plus 40 years of, of content on this. But there was a paper, a 2007 paper authored by Johan Bruniel and a couple of associates where they they said that that uh, proximity has a significant impact on the level of interorganizational trust. So they went beyond just the people. They actually went to the organization, said, when I have better proximity, I actually trust the organization more. So it's not just the interpersonal part. It's the the actual organizational elements of this. And so we think about brands and how much how much we love brands. We don't have social interaction around brands. How will we how is that going to work? I mean, I, it will. I think that we'll figure it out. But I, I just don't have an answer right now. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. But again, I think in business to business sales where branding isn't quite the same as it is in consumer products, right. in consumer products, I don't care if I ever see a Coke 
distributor or Coke sales rep who's bringing the Coca-Cola Zero, which you and I both like, into into the store. But you know, I do have that that sense about it. But in business to business sales, I think that brand is oftentimes that salesperson. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They are the brand, and you you see that because a salesperson leaves and goes to a different company, and oftentimes they get many of their customers to follow them. Insurance sales, other pieces along that line, you know, follow that that trajectory and a lot. Right. Um, so when you think about that and that proximity aspect of it, there is that trust that comes with being together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah. it's how we build friendships. Our friendships are built on, you know, having some pieces of being close together. It's when I, again, not to bring this back to us, but I do a lot of my work via phone. Uh, but I always, uh, particularly at the beginning of any type of project, I always try to do some sort of in-person meeting to get to know the right. players because that that relationship that you build even if it's just an hour or two hour meeting that you have is vastly different than that same hour or two hour meeting via zoom or a phone conference or anything like that. Yeah. I also wanted to get back to this adopting or adoption or adaption adaptation issue. (laughs) I'm not sure, but I loved how Michael talked about how, he used to be really upset when a dog would run into the room and they were, when he was on a zoom call with one of his colleagues, one of his teammates. And now it's like, no, that's actually kind of a cool thing. Like dogs and kids and videos, all good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? the, the, the level of grace that we have as, as Bradshaw would say, right. Mm-hmm. Um, has, has gone up. And, and I think that's a real positive of this. I think we've also had this conversation in the past, too, that those dogs and kids in the background and in those Zoom meetings that we're having lend a level of intimacy that we didn't have before, particularly with our coworkers, an intimacy in the way of getting to know them on a, on a more personal, personal human yeah. level mm-hmm. as opposed to just a work level. So there's some value in that. And that may even translate again, going into the sales relationships that we're having. Maybe there's a bit of that grace that can occur in some of those customer conversations and bringing in some of the personal pieces, again, getting to see where you work in your house, in how you live. Those are pieces that I think are really important. Now, I did read some things earlier about, you know, maybe going a little overboard, the people taking the uh, conference calls from their bed still under covers and (laughs) doing Zoom things like with guys with their shirts off or people sitting out in their, you know, swimsuit next to their pool in the backyard. Social norms are being stretched maybe maybe, maybe a, little, a too far. little bit on that. And you probably don't want to do that, particularly if you're trying to build a relationship with a new customer, unless that's <laughs> on brand for what you're trying to sell. What you're doing, right. right? Right. But but to a degree, I think there is a level of personal insight that you get in these types of communications that we're doing now that yeah. you might not have gotten otherwise. And I, I encourage, I, this is the one thing I've, I've seen with some of the, of, of the clients that we've done, you know, we, in, before this whole thing happened, we often would have conference calls and those were, those were your standard conference calls, voice only. I've seen a few of our customers switching to uh face, you know, whether it be, uh, WebEx Skype, or, Zoom or whoever, WebEx, Skype, yeah. right? Go to uh, meeting, yeah. And I think there's value in that, particularly today. And there are some that still have it, that we still just do voice. And I think there's something to be said, particularly from a sales perspective, that if you used to do, you know, again, it might be you've already sold something and you're working on the delivery of it and you would have a, a phone conversation or a phone call. Make that a video chat if you can. I think there's some value in getting that face to face because you can't get that now by going in to see them. So you need to do it in other ways and, and right. make that happen more often. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to a rant that I've 
I've hit on a couple times here. And are we stitching together something that was decoupled at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution? Are we bringing work and home life back together in a way that might actually be beneficial to us as a species? I don't know, but I think it's a great question. And one as we've talked about again over and over, there's there's some themes coming back in into throughout these, aren't there? There's some some really yeah. good themes. And we're going to do the lessons learned podcast here Definitely. coming up in in shortly at some point we will do that uh, once we get this but there there are some themes and, and those themes of yes you know this is a one of those themes is this is a big natural experiment and the idea that we're learning as we're going and maybe who knows that this could be a great way of saying let's get back and and not have work life family life friends life that somehow this is all interconnected, that we are more of a holistic person because yeah. of this. Thank you for listening to the special episode of Behavior Grooves. We hope that you found it interesting and insightful. If you liked it, please let others know. We think that the topic is important and maybe we can help in educating people about how behavioral science can help us all out in this current craziness that we are going through. Also, please let us know if you have any thoughts or ideas that would be helpful or that we could share. You can reach us through the Connect tab on the Behavior Grooves website at www.behavioralgrooves.com or through Twitter. I am at T. Houlihan and Kurt is at What Motivates. We really do love hearing from you. And this topic is one that spurs lots of emotions and thought. As part of our mission, we want to expand and inform the community of people who think about positively applying behavioral science to life. One way that happens is through leaving reviews. If you think this podcast is beneficial and should grow, we would really appreciate to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcast server you use. It only takes a few minutes and goes a long way to boost us in the algorithms that are used to generate search results. Also, please check out the show notes. We are linking to a number of resources articles, podcasts, newsletters that we vetted to bring good facts and ideas around COVID-19 and the coronavirus, its impact and ways that we can help slow down the spread. There is a lot of information that's being pushed out to everyone each day, and we are weeding through it to find good stuff so that you don't have to. We truly appreciate you listening. Now go out and wash your hands.